Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, thank you very much for watching my video and supporting me. In today's tutorial, I would like to show you how to knit this beautiful stitch. Um, here is, I have two versions which we're going to work together. And I hope you really like this stitch. Um, it's very versatile and it's very, very pretty. Um, here I just have like a little headband that I made. It's a very girly one <laughs> and um, I just wanted to show you an example of how you can use uh, this pattern in your project. Um, I'll leave you to watch the tutorial and I hope you're gonna like it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel just to support my work. Thank you! For this demonstration I have here some yarn. Um, today I'm gonna be using two colors because I think this pattern is more visible and prettier um, and it stands out more if we are using uh, two colors. Of course that's up to you, you can use a single color but for this demonstration I'll be using two colors. Uh, I'm gonna start with white. For the standard pattern uh, of this uh, stitch we need a multiple of six stitches plus one. So multiple of 6 plus 1. I got here 37 stitches, which I already casted on. So multiple of 6 plus 1. I decided to make 6 little flowers. So I have here 37 stitches. I already casted on and I've done a little base row, which is not going to count for, um, for our pattern. I like to make uh, an initial base row just to get my tension right before I start uh, knitting up the pattern. For row 1, this is a very easy pattern and very beautiful in my opinion. For row number 1, I'm going to slip the first one and then knit all the stitches. So simply knit all of them. Just knit all the way to the end. I'm going to need the last one too. Row number two, wrong side row, slip the first one and then purl all the stitches. So we are working in stockinet stitch. So I'm just going to purl all the wrong side uh, rows. Just going to purl all the way, all the way to the end. So stockinet stitch. For our number three, we continue in stockinette stitch. So slip first one and knit all the stitches. It's a very easy pattern and very, very uh, flexible. It can be adapted to many projects. I'm planning to use it in uh, quite a few projects. So uh, there are some tutorials coming up using this pattern. So I'll continue to finish off my row, just knitted stitches. Next is row number four, again wrong side row. Just slip the first one and I'm gonna purl all my stitches. So I'll continue to purl all the way. Next is row number five. Uh, on this row I'm gonna start uh, working in the contrast color. So in my case I have attached the red color. As you can see my white uh, yarn is still attached because I don't want to, you don't need to cut the yarn off on, for this project even if you're changing around the colors. So that's why I still have it attached. For row number five, in my case I will be changing color. So I'm gonna knit all the stitches. So simply knit all of them, but in the contrast color. So continue with the stockinette stitch. I'm just going to knit all my stitches and I'm introducing my contrast color. Row number six. This is the row when I'm going to start constructing the little flowers. So I'm going to slip the first stitch and then 
I will knit the next one but in a more special way so introduce my needle as if to knit the stitch and then I'm gonna wrap the yarn around three times one two and three and then I pull out through the stitch and this is the type of stitch that's gonna result next I put my uh, needle through and I'm gonna wrap the yarn around three times one two and three and then I bring it out and release my stitch every flower will have five of these stitches so wrap your yarn around three times like this and pull through how many I've done? three so I need to do two more for the first flower put my needle through as if to knit two and three and pull it through one two three of course if you wish to make the flowers bigger or smaller you can reduce the number or increase the number of uh, wrap around yarn so you can wrap around only twice or maybe four times if you prefer to have them bigger so slip the first stitch I've done two four five five of these um, stitches they're gonna result in some elongated stitches like really big ones Go five next knit my next stitch just simple knit and now I'm gonna start my second flower and once more two three I don't know how to name these uh, stitches you wrap your uh, yarn around three times and once again three one two and three just double check how many I've done I've done four so I need one more one two and three then knit the next one so the pattern itself has six uh, stitches five for the flowers and one between the flowers so we got five elongated ones knitted one normal two four five of the long ones plus one normal stitch then again one two three I'll do five of these one two and three one two three wraps one two how many I've done? Four. Do one more for this flower and then knit one. I'm just gonna continue. I have two more flowers to do. I have reached the end of my row. I had three little flowers in the end. Uh, so I've done two, four, five and I'm on my last stitch I'm just gonna knit knit my last stitch next row is row number seven this is the row where our pattern actually comes to life so row number seven slip the first stitch now with the yarn behind my working needle I'm just gonna pull these uh, newly constructed stitches which are going to be very long so one two three four and five so I got five long stitches two four five on my needle and the yarn is behind what I'm going to try and do now is tie them together so Take your yarn like this, so it goes behind these stitches. Now move your stitches across, 
careful to take all five of them and bring the yarn around again like this behind the working needle bring your stitches across again and now wrap it around and pull it slightly you don't want it too tight but you want some tension there to form the flowers and once more two times should be enough to keep the stitches together so move them across I'll move them back and I'm gonna pull this yarn so I create some some tension there to keep the stitches together and form this flower um, aspect I'll do it together one more time next one it's a simple stitch I'm just going to knit this is the separation stitch now again I have my yarn behind my working needle so I'm just gonna pick these stitches up this long stitches like this I have again five stitches on my needle bring my yarn from behind I'll bring it like this move my stitches across pick up the yarn again and again it's in the back of my right hand needle I bring the stitches once more again the yarn goes behind pull it slightly and move them across so we do we wrap the yarn around two times for um, to give them extra security like this and it goes behind I'm gonna pull it a little bit more and knit your next stitch Knit my next stitch, yarn behind my needle. I'm just gonna slip them across. Oops. Okay, two, four, five. I'll bring the yarn in the front, move them across my other needle careful to take all of them yarn behind my right hand needle again move my stitches across once more pull it I hope you can see I move them across it's very easy once practiced for a couple of flowers becomes uh, very very easy I'm just going to pull my yarn a little bit don't want this to be too loose and just knit my next stitch I'll do this once more in front of the camera one and two and three four five five elongated stitches bring the yarn in front move the stitches across pick up your yarn again move them across again and once more like this and that's it pull them and it's starting to form and it looks very pretty there we go knit the next stitch I have two more to do which I'll do behind the camera completed my last uh, little flower and the last stitch I'm just going to knit turn around we are on the wrong side of the work next is row number eight and for this row I'm going to slip my first stitch 
and then I'm going to knit so just knit all the stitches I'm going to knit through these big loops and just treat them as normal stitches just knit them all row number eight the wrong side row that uh, I just completed was the last row of this pattern so from now we're going back to row number one so it's an eight uh, rows repeat so now we're just going to work exactly like from the beginning so we're going to repeat all of that but for the next row we're just changing so I'm reverting to the white color because I want contrast so I'm making the flowers in a contrast color and then I'm reverting back to my main color so exactly like we did on row one just need all the stitches but I'm reverting to my initial color and I'm going to knit all the stitches so we're gonna work stocking it stitch for four more rows or actually five but on the fifth one we're changing color again and I'll continue to knit all the way I have completed four rows in stockinette stitch and this is how it looks like now uh, sometimes these little flowers or butterflies or whatever you want to name them might need a little bit of adjusting so I'm just gonna pull these here in the middle just make them look prettier just tidy them up a little bit I'm just gonna pull and that will even the tension between them so this is how they look like of course this sample is not blocked or anything so once you've completed your project and you block it this is gonna look really really pretty um, this is very very flexible this pattern so if you prefer you can knit a bigger gap between the rows of uh, flowers or butterflies so the standard pattern says four rows and then we do one more set of the flowers but if you prefer you can increase this gap between them I'm going to follow the standard pattern for now and I'm gonna change the color again so this is will be my fifth row in stocking it stage but I'm also changing color so I can get ready for a new set of uh, of little flowers so again I'm just continuing I'm not detaching my yarn because it's hidden quite well here so if you're working on a larger project or something you don't have to cut off the yarn constantly it will just hide itself here so you'll have some ends at the beginning and at the end of the work but all the way through you don't really need to cut it off you can stay there hidden behind so I'm just going to continue this one, it will adjust itself as the work progress. I'm just going to knit as usual, all of them, so just to be able to swap the color and start doing a new row of uh, little flowers. But I want to show you how you can adjust the size of them because on some of my projects which I'm planning to um, film tutorials for I really love this pattern so I'm using it in a few of my designs uh, I have modified the pattern of the stitch for a few project and just making uh, smaller flowers so I'll continue finishing this one off completed my row uh, next it's a wrong side row and um, this is the equivalent of row number six of the initial pattern what I'm going to do now I'm going to make some smaller flowers and instead of five stitches for each flower I'm going to make three so in this case I will need a multiple of four stitches plus one I got 37 stitches here on my needles 36 is a multiple of 4 as well as 6 and plus 1 
so I can make more flowers but smaller ones and if that makes sense so I'm gonna slip the first one and I'm just going to make uh, move my yarn around I'm going to knit but instead of five I'm going to make only three so wrap around the yarn three uh, the yarn around the needle three times same like we did here one two three and one two three and instead of five this elongated stitches I'm going to make only three and then I need one and again I'm gonna make three elongated stitches so I wrap my yarn around the needle three times of course you can wrap it around two times or four times uh, you can play around do different tests see what works well for your project I think three times will be okay for this yarn thickness so I've done three stitches again knit one I'm gonna do three more one two three so wrap the yarn around three times two three and one two three three of them knit one and I'm just gonna continue the same making three elongated ones, knit one, three elongated ones, knit one till the end of my row I have completed my row, uh, finished with the knit one stitch next it's a uh, right side work, a row slip the first one yarn behind the needle exactly like we did first time the only difference is that now we're going to have only three elong elongated stitches. I don't know how else to call them. So I got three of them and I do exactly the same. Wrap my yarn around them. This is the second time. Pull it and knit my next stitch. Again, slip them off. The needle, I got the three, I go around them, in front of them, around them again, and front of them again, and I pull it tighter, so it gave me a good tension there, and a nice shape for the flowers, and again, so they're still very very nice but they are a little bit smaller so depending what your pattern is I don't know what your idea is what would you like to do you can adapt these flowers I think this is amazing when it comes to this pattern you can just make an accent out of them uh, I don't know just a colorful addition make a project more interesting and then you can continue in a different pattern if you prefer so, okay, need one. I'm just going to complete this row. Completed the row. I'm going to turn around, and this is the equivalent of our last row of initial pattern. So, that'll be row number eight. I'm going to slip the first one and then knit all my stitches. Once again, instead of five, I only have three and more flowers. Like more and smaller so that doesn't affect the main instructions of this stitch pattern I'm just gonna knit all of them completed my row I'm gonna revert to white yarn and knit all my stitches and this basically resets my pattern so I'm starting again from the initial row like we did here and I'm gonna knit all the stitches and that's it we're just resetting I'm just gonna complete this row and I'm gonna work a few more in stockinette stitch and then I'll get back to you so 
we can have a look at these little flowers or butterflies. I have worked for rows of stockinette stitch and now they're visible, they're better. I'm just going to adjust them a little bit here in the middle so they're going to look prettier. There we go. And this one I pulled a little bit too tight, but that's all right because if we do this, they will just even the tension and then they will look okay. And this is what I was saying it's just less flowers, but they're kind of smaller. I hope you can see. So it's it's really up to everybody's uh, own choice and taste, I guess. Or you can work this intervals bigger. So this is not blocked or anything. This is how it looks like. I am back with a few more examples of uh, this pattern use. Here, um, this is just a little sample, I was just uh, testing some designs, but I wanted to show you how it looks like with a bigger gap between the flowers. I was just testing out and again I have bigger ones and smaller ones and this is how it looks like. I think here I've used 10, uh, 10 rows of stockinette stitch. Uh, this is the one we just worked together. Uh, here I have a little headband. Uh, just a tiny headband uh, or ear warmer, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is in Merino Extra Fine and it's not blocked or anything. I recommend you, when you're blocking these, uh, maybe try just to steam them a little bit. They will look better. And this is the one we've done together. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and I really hope you're going to try this stitch and just, uh, I don't know, do whichever version that you prefer and I hope you like it and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.